Data science is more than just building fancy machine learning models. When you boil it down, the key objective of data science is to solve problems. The trouble, however, is at the outset of most data science projects, we rarely have a well-defined problem. In these situations, the role of a data scientist isn't to have all the answers, but rather to ask the right questions. In this video, I'll share five questions that every data scientist should hard code into their brain to make identifying and defining business problems second nature. And if you're new here, I'm Shah. I make content about data science and entrepreneurship. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. That's a great no-cost way to support me in all the content that I make. Before diving into the questions, I want to give some context for where they are coming from. Like many others, when I started my data science journey, I was hyper-focused on learning tools and technologies. While this technical foundation is necessary to be a successful data scientist, focusing too much on tools creates the hammer problem, which is when you have a really nice hammer hammer, everything looks like a nail. This often leads to projects that are intellectually stimulating, yet practically useless. I finally outgrew this approach when I joined a data science team at a large enterprise. The key lesson from that experience was the importance of focusing on problems rather than technologies. This means that one should gain a sufficiently deep understanding of the business problem before writing a single line of code. And since, as data scientists, we don't typically solve our own problems, problems, we gain this understanding through conversations with stakeholders and clients. Getting this right is important because if you don't, you can spend a lot of time and money solving the wrong problem. This is where problem discovery questions come in. Over the past six months, I've developed a bit of an obsession with cracking these early stage discovery conversations with stakeholders and clients. My approach to getting better at this has been twofold. First, I interviewed 10 seasoned data freelancers about their best practices and how they approach these conversations. And second, I took as many discovery calls as possible, which ended up being around 25. The five questions I share here are the culmination of all these efforts. While this is by no means a complete list, these are questions that seem to come up over and over again. So the first question here is, what problem are you trying to solve? While in theory, this should be the only question you need to ask, in practice, things don't typically work out that way. In most instances, clients aren't super clear on the problem that they need to solve. And even if they are, I typically will need to do some catching up to better understand the business context. Either way, this question is helpful because it ideally brings up follow-up questions which allow me to dig deeper into the client's world. For example, if a client says, we tried creating a custom chatbot with OpenAI, but it didn't provide good results, I might ask, what was the chatbot used for? Or what makes you say the results weren't good? And a lot of times, if a follow-up question doesn't come to mind, I find a really helpful practice is just to rephrase and summarize what the client tells me. Most times, this is another way to keep the conversation going and keep digging into the challenges that the client is facing. A natural way to follow up the what question is why. This is one of the most powerful questions you can ask a client because it can unlock the floodgates to the client's motivations, goals, assumptions, and beyond. However, why questions have a tendency to make people defensive, which is why having multiple ways of phrasing this question can be helpful. Some examples of this are as follows. Why is this important to your business? Why do you want to solve this now? What does solving this mean for your business? How does this fit into the larger goals of your business? Why do you want to use AI to solve this problem? The key benefit of asking the why question or any of its variants is that they allow you to dig more deeply into the client's problem and ultimately identify the root cause. This is reminiscent of Toyota's five whys approach, which teaches to get to the root cause of any problem, one should ask why five times. These first two questions of what are we doing and why are we doing it are two of the most fundamental questions in business. So getting really good at asking what and why in many different ways can take you very far. The next question is, what's your dream outcome? I like this question because it essentially combines the what and why questions, and it tends to 
get people to speak to their vision of the project in a way that may not come through when asked directly. Having multiple ways of asking what and why is important because it often takes a few passes to really get to the root cause of a client's problem. Two related questions here are, what does success look like and how would we measure it? These are a bit more pragmatic than a dream outcome, but are helpful for transitioning from asking what and why to how. The next question is, what have you tried so far? This helps narrow down potential solutions in two ways. One, it helps avoid wasting time on things that didn't work. And two, any new project should build upon existing work. This latter point is based on the philosophy that data science projects should seek incremental innovation. Therefore, they should be simple and iterative. For situations where the client hasn't built anything so far, one can ask any of the following questions. What is the existing solution? How do you solve this problem now? What have others done to solve a similar problem? In either case, these questions help set the stage for the project and help you avoid reinventing the wheel. The final question is one I got from master negotiator Chris Voss, which is, why me? Asking this question is an effective way to reveal people's motivations for talking to you. Often, this sparks additional context of what led them to you and how they see you fitting into the project, which is helpful for next steps. Sometimes, however, people don't have good answers to this question, which may indicate they don't actually want to work with you and they're holding back some deeper motive, such as they're looking for free consulting or they're looking for a competing bid to take to the person they actually want to work with. A key lesson for me these past six months was to learn these questions, i.e. hard code them into my brain, but then forget about them. The point isn't to mindlessly go down a list of questions when talking to clients, but rather get to the point where these questions naturally form in your mind during the flow of conversation. This intuition is something that can only develop through practice. Toward that end, here are three key takeaways that have been helpful to me in developing this skill set. First, don't just study these questions, use them. While this may result in a fair share of awkward moments, it's all part of the learning process. And don't worry, I'm still learning too. Second is to stay curious. The goal of these early stage conversations isn't to look smart or sell, but rather to learn. Which brings up the final takeaway, listen more than you talk. My rule of thumb is to wait until the last five to 10 minutes of a 30 minute call to start offering recommendations and next steps. Prior to that, my challenge is to ask questions, rephrase and summarize client answers, and to ask follow-up questions following my natural curiosity. If you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. That's a great no-cost way you can support me in all the videos that I make. To read more about this topic, check out the blog in Towards Data Science, which you can access using the friend link in the description below. Like I said earlier, this is by no means a complete list, so if you have anything to add, please drop those in the comments section below. And as always, thank you so much for your time and thanks for watching.